This is the OnePlus Nord, possibly the most hyped phone of 2020. With this phone, OnePlus hopes to recreate the hysteria that started it all with the OnePlus One. But does the OnePlus Nord achieve the true north for the brand? And is it worth all that hype? Hi, I'm Ashraf from Mr. Phone and I'm going to be answering those questions in my full review. For today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the unboxing and my first impressions of the newly launched, swanky new OnePlus Nord. And before we move on, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever Mr. Phone puts out a new OnePlus Nord content or any other tech video for that matter. Also, we are building communities over at Telegram and Instagram, links to which should be in the description below. So this is the reviewer's edition box of the OnePlus Nord. Please note the retail packaging for consumers won't look like this, so don't get your hopes up high. Anyway, it is a pretty big box and I'm guessing the retail packaging of the Nord comes inside it. In fact, the box is so big that I can only show it to you horizontally on camera because my lens cannot go so wide. And from what I can read on the flap, it seems like there are four more boxes within this bigger box. The deep reds are now replaced by a lot of black and teal accent color. I believe the teal is actually called Nord Blue. This design language possibly defines the new category. Now let's slide out that top lid and voila, that is indeed some really slick packaging. The first thing that we see is the blue sandstone case. The other case options include a black and a transparent one. OnePlus always makes sure that the accessories for its phones are top notch. I'm surprised OnePlus didn't go with a black and Nord Blue aesthetic for the packaging of the cases. Moving on, this is the new retail packaging for the OnePlus Nord. But before I unbox that, let's take a look at one of the cases. I like this gorgeous blue case in particular, so let's take it out of its packaging. Okay, so this one has a proper sandstone finish and it feels pretty sturdy too. There are ridges on the side as well for better grip. And this color is actually the Nord Blue color. Now let's finally unbox the phone. Taking a look at the rear side of the box, you'll notice that this is the blue marble variant of the phone with 12 GB of RAM and 256 GB of storage. It has a SAR value of 1.08 and looks like it's been manufactured in Noida. Now let's rip open the outer plastic with this handy blue tab. I really like the aesthetic of the branding and the feel of the texture on the case. The Nord branding and the OnePlus logo are actually etched into the box. I must say that for a mid-range phone, OnePlus has not made any concessions in packaging. If anything, I actually like this box more than the OnePlus 8 Pro One. On lifting the top lid, you can see the phone wrapped in plastic with the text This Way Nord written on top. And there you go. This is the OnePlus Nord in all its blue marble glory. This is such a gorgeous colorway. But I must say, the camera structure reminds me of Realme's industrial design. On the front, you get a screen protector pre-installed and I'm not really a fan of its quality. Now let me switch it on. While it boots up for the very first time, let me quickly take a look at how it looks inside the Nord Blue case. The color is slightly different for sure. The color of the case is definitely different from the color of the phone. The phone locks inside the case with a satisfying click. Anyway, here's a quick look at how the phone looks in all the three cases. Keeping the phone aside, you get a welcome letter inside the box and there is a case that comes bundled within the box as well. This is the retail unit case that will be available inside every OnePlus Nord box that you as a consumer would be buying. And the three cases I showed earlier will be available for purchase separately. This case has a unique texture too and tries to distinguish from the regular plain Jane silicon cases you get inside other boxes. In fact, it looks like OnePlus is trying to do something different with its inbox cases, which started off actually with the Never Settle case on the OnePlus 8 Pro. Moving on, you also get a SIM ejector tool and a few stickers. I particularly like the new Nord logo sticker very good branding language. Then you've got the quick start guide, a safety information pamphlet and the red club cable membership card. Finally, you get the Warp Charge 30T charger that can charge at 5 volts and 6 amperes or 30 watts. Along with it, you get the red colored USB Type-C cable. I half expected OnePlus to bundle a Nord Blue color cable to go along with the whole design aesthetic, but we'll have to stick with red for now. That's it for the unboxing. I'm now going to set up the phone and start using it. What's nice about the OnePlus Nord is this blue marble colorway. It looks pretty good on that glossy Corning Gorilla Glass 5 protected back panel. In fact, even the front is protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 5. 
My only gripe is the mid frame is made of plastic with a fake metallic polish. I really don't like that finish and it is intended to make you believe that it is actually made of aluminum when it is not. That apart, the Nord doesn't have any IP rating but comes with requisite rubber seals to provide some bit of protection. On the rear, you also have a raised vertical camera module with four cameras inside it. This design language is reminiscent of Realme's industrial design and therefore there's that sense of deja vu that crops up. Additionally, as is the case with almost every raised module, it causes the dreaded table wobble. But worry not, all the official cases have a raised lip around the camera module to get rid of that wobble. There's a dual SIM tray, a Type-C port with USB 2.0 spec, a single speaker grill and a mic at the bottom. On top is another mic and what's conspicuously missing is the headphone jack which is a major letdown. As for the buttons, you get a power button on the right and a volume rocker on the left and of course, there's the awesome alert slider that has been the marquee feature of OnePlus phones. Thanks to the slightly curved rear glass, it fits in the hand nicely. It is slightly thicker and heavier than the OnePlus 8, but the smaller profile actually helps thanks to the smaller display in making ergonomics better. Regardless, you won't have a problem with how the phone feels in your hand. I do miss the headphone jack on the OnePlus Nord, but I'm pretty sure that design is one of the strong points of this phone and is definitely bound to ruffle a few feathers in the mid-range segment. The Nord has a 6.44 inch fluid AMOLED 1080p panel with a 90Hz refresh rate and there's Corning's Gorilla Glass 5 cover protection on top of it. I must say this, I didn't like the quality of the screen protector you get inside the box. I removed it in an instant. The flat panel reminded me of the panel on the OnePlus 70 actually. Only difference is instead of the water drop notch, there's now a dual punch hole camera on the display which looks like a pill. I'm not a fan of these dual punch solutions, but thankfully you get an ultra wide selfie camera and not a shitty depth sensor. And to add to that, this punch hole is on the top left corner and gets hidden away in landscape mode while playing games. So in many use case scenarios, I'm okay with this. This display supports wide-wide L1 and can play back HDR ready content on Netflix as well. There's a fast in-display scanner and a very good linear vibration motor for precise haptic feedback. Fun fact, I actually wrote the entire script for this unboxing and first impressions on my OnePlus Nord. And lest I forget, you get an improved touch response of 180Hz as well. For context, the OnePlus 70 had a touch response rate of 135Hz. Spec for spec, the display on the OnePlus Nord is almost as good as the one on the OnePlus 70 or the OnePlus 8 for that matter. Although I do need some more time with the display to find out if there are any typical issues that we generally find with OnePlus phones. <coughs> Black crush. <coughs> Green tint. I'm just kidding. By the way, the Nord has a Snapdragon 765G inside, which is actually a gaming chipset, but of course a super mid-range chipset. Now this SoC also has support for 5G whenever it becomes available and you can achieve speeds of up to 3.3 Gbps with the X52 modem is what uh, you know Qualcomm claims. I've yet to fully push the limits of the Snapdragon 765G chip on the OnePlus Nord. I'll save that for the full review. But all you need to know is I'm coming from a OnePlus 8 Pro and I can't really tell the difference in performance. It is as smooth and as fast as the OnePlus 8 Pro and that's where OnePlus has played a masterstroke, I feel. And yeah, you get three variants of the OnePlus Nord, 664, 8128 and 12256 GB. The RAM is of the LPDDR4X kind and the storage is UFS 2.1 type. As for the battery, you get a 4115mAh unit with the support for warp charge 30T wired charging speeds. As expected, the Nord doesn't come with wireless charging, so you can't use a wireless charger here. Wait for my full review on my complete verdict on the battery life. For now, this is what I can tell you. So OnePlus is very confident of the quad camera stack on the OnePlus Nord. In fact, in its marketing material, it goes on to claim that if you don't like the cameras, we've messed up. Um, that is a very tall claim and I still need some time to actually test out the cameras in full detail. I'll keep that for my full review and the camera comparisons that I'll be doing with the phone. But for now, let's take a look at the specs, uh, you know, the features of the OnePlus Nord's cameras and of course, a few initial samples. So the main camera is a 48 megapixel Sony IMX 586 sensor attached to an f by 1.75 lens which is optically stabilized. It is ably supported by an 8 megapixel ultra wide, 2 megapixel macro and a 5 megapixel depth camera. To be honest, 
OnePlus could have easily skipped the macro and depth for a telephoto. But while telephoto cameras and the lenses attached to it uh, inside a smartphone are generally very expensive, and of course, they will also take up more space inside the phone once you fit them in, and therefore making it fat. The one reason why I would recommend the Nord, even without testing it, is for the Oxygen OS experience. I got a clean UI with absolutely no hiccups whatsoever. The customization options are a plenty, and there's no bloatware or notification spam or pesky cleaner apps either. Furthermore, OnePlus has promised two years of assured software updates and three years of security updates. What more could you really ask for? By the way, for some odd reason, OnePlus has replaced its phone messages and contacts app with Google's first party apps. That's completely odd. Anyway, as for the software, I'll talk about any more interesting changes in my full review. In the three days that I've used the OnePlus Nord, I'm really glad that OnePlus has managed to maintain the same kind of smoothness and speed that you get from its more expensive flagships like the OnePlus 8 and the OnePlus 8 Pro. This relentless pursuit to unify user experience and you know provide the best possible usage experience is what sets OnePlus apart. Moving on, what you see on your screen is the pricing and availability details of the phone for different regions. While the rupees 24999 pricing is actually pretty Pretty good for the base 6 plus 64 GB variant. Note that it will be available only in September. You will be able to buy only the 8 plus 128 GB as the base variant right now. So what do you guys think of the pricing? Do let me know in the comment section below. Regardless of the price, I'm pretty sure that fans and non-fans alike are going to actually enjoy the OnePlus Nord and they don't even need to see my review that will drop on the 27th. But what I'll try to find out in that review is the bits that you might not like on the OnePlus Nord so that you can make a more informed decision. So do wait for that. So what do you guys think of the OnePlus Nord? Has it managed to achieve the true North for the brand? Do let me know in the comment section below along with your recommendations for the kind of comparisons that you want us to do with this phone. Until next time, this is Aishar from Mr. Phone signing off. Goodbye and Godspeed, my friends.